Utah primary voters, the big race in the primary is the Republican nomination for governor. The winner will be the heavy favorite going into November. Former governor John Huntsman Jr. is hoping to serve in that capacity again. He's live in studio. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Glenn. It's a great honor. Well, you uh, launched in November, and here we are one day out. How are you feeling as we are getting that much closer to the finish line? I feel great. The whole family feels terrific. We're just really honored to be a candidate for uh, the highest office in this state. Uh, we're focused on two things that I think matter most to our future, because we're going to have a vaccine at some point for this dread virus. And then it's going to all be about the economy. It's going to be how do we pull out of this COVID hole that we're in where we've got high unemployment and we've got to recharge the engines of growth. And uh, we're going to need a governor who's got a plan and the ability to get and double our economic base. So that's number one. And I'm prepared to do it. We've done it before. Number two is mental health, which hits uh, this great state in a much different way. It hits us right in the heart and soul. It's an emotional thing. But right now, we're the buckle of the suicide belt of the United States, and we all know we can be doing a whole lot better. And I wanted to declare war on this insidious problem, and I want to lead a long-term effort to see what kinds of resources the state really does need in order to better serve our people when it comes to mental illness and, and mental health. You've already been the governor before, uh, going for it again this time around. How does that vision you just laid out differ from when you were the state's chief executive uh, earlier? We faced some economic challenges before, Glenn, and the whole name of the game was how do we keep from getting our kids to be our largest export out of the state? How do we keep our kids? We raise them, nurture them, we educate them. It's our brain power for tomorrow. Well, you've got to have an economy that keeps them here. And so we rebranded the state life elevated. We delivered the first flat tax in the history of the United States. We stood up the economic development apparatus that the state still has, and we prepared for the last 15 years of economic growth. And I'm prepared now to take it to a new level, which would be doubling our state's output. So if we want to say, how are we going to fund education in ways that would meet the aspirations of all of us, there's only one way to do that. We've got to grow our way into a position where we can afford to double what we're spending on education now. Transportation in uh, the fastest growing state in America, same thing for us to be able to get to where we need to be. It's not just money that appears magically. You've got to be able to earn it based upon what your economy does. And so for me, coming out of the COVID hole, and if we're lucky enough to be elected, I'm going to jump right into it. We have a plan, and we're going to get out, and we're going to double the state's output over the next 10 years, and we're going to declare war early on on this insidious problem, mental illness. I, I want to ask you about your campaign, because to say it's a roller coaster ride, probably an understatement. First, <laughs> you had to change everything when COVID hit, right. and the rules of the election changed, and then you came down with COVID-19, right. had to change everything again. What are your thoughts on how this process played out? Well, it really hasn't been a campaign to speak of because we haven't been able to get out and campaign in the traditional sense with town hall meetings and uh, shaking hands with people and looking them in the eye and making the sale. That's what I love most about retail politics because the voters are pretty smart and they can figure out if you're earnest and sincere and actually uh, want to get out with a plan to help the state. So the campaign has not been a campaign, but we've learned a lot of lessons about uh, where we are since. And I think the whole COVID experience probably has uh, made a lot of people more aware of how valuable life is, how valuable our families are, how valuable our economy is. And maybe, you know, as we continue, because COVID isn't gonna disappear, it's gonna be around for the next few months until we have a vaccine. So let's deal with that reality. But in the meantime, let's be smart enough to be able to segregate those who are in the uh, uh, higher profile condition category, those with pre-existing conditions beyond a certain age and long-term care facilities. I've had it, three other family members have had it now. We've experienced the ups and downs and the vicissitudes of this, of this bad virus. But there are people who really do uh, get it in a very, very serious way. And first and foremost, we have to look after them. But in order for the rest of us to get by, we have to have an adequate test system in the state which for the most part, uh, at least in the case of our family, has been a complete embarrassment. Yeah. A and, and that's something that for the state really to do well, uh, let's start just with the basics of testing those who, uh, who think they have it. All right. We could certainly go on a lot longer on this conversation, but we are out of time. Appreciate uh, you joining us. It's going to be interesting you, to see how this plays out. We Get may out not vote. have a winner by tomorrow night. Get out and vote. It's a great privilege. Get out and vote. Take advantage of it. All right. Thanks for your time.